I am going to show you how I build this pole holder. Um, this board I have here, this is from a, a tree at the last house I lived in that uh, I, I had a fe I, I had to fell a uh, cedar tree in the backyard, and I built this uh, Alaskan sawmill kind of a uh, saw jig. Um, and uh, milled up a cup, some some lumber. So that's what this this board is from, and that's why it's so cupped and twisted. And so here, I'm just breaking this board down. Um, I know that I'm going to lose a lot of this just by getting straight boards. So um, one big board trying to turn into, into four little boards here. <clears throat> so, so I was trying to rip this piece down uh, and it kind of bound my table saw up so I turned the saw off tried it again tried it again and it's still binding up so um, I start to go on the second one just change my mind I decided I just go ahead and break these down rip them down on my uh, my band saw you know for this sort of thing where there's so much tension in the board just safer to, to rip them on a bandsaw as opposed to the table saw because bandsaw won't kick a board back at you if it binds. Um, so that's what I'm doing here, just ripping these boards up. And then once I get them ripped, I'm going to start milling. I just got the one dust collection hose for my bandsaw. And then I split it between my joiner and, and planer here. So. Um, Get that set up, hooked up, and now I'm going to start planing these, wanting to get at least two flat sides. And these boards were pretty bad, and I did a lot of planing, <laughs> so I, I fast forward through quite a bit of it here, and and also I cut a bunch of it out too. So I hit desire to hit her plane a bunch of it, and these boards were um, so warped that I, I kind of give up on planing. So what I'm I did is I, I put a straight line on use one of the straighter boards, and then put a straight line on these. And now I'm gonna cut along my straight line with my bandsaw here, um, just to say I could have done it with a planer, but I just trying to save me some time. I, I was planing these boards for for a long time. And same thing here. You can see one of the boards had a cup, one of them had a bow. That bow is like three eighths of an inch. Um, and then uh, get them straight. And then once they were straight, I, I should have done that with all of them. Probably should have just got ran a chalk, chalk line and, and band sawed straight lines, and that would have saved me a lot of time milling, saved some life on my bl planer blades too. But oh well. I didn't, so <laughs> this is where I'm at. Anyway, so then just I'm just flattening those other two boards out. Once I get that done, now I'm going to rip all the boards to get to a consistent thickness. And I think it was like seven eighths of an inch before I took them to my thickness planer. There about I think they ended up being somewhere between seven eighths and three quarters of an inch thick when I was done. Um, I was just kind of working with whatever dimensions I could get out of this wood. I didn't really have, didn't really care whether they was three quarter of an inch or half inch or five eighths or just you know as much yield as I could get. And then uh, once I get them all cut to thickness, and then I'll just run them through my thickness planer and get them all the same thickness and nice and smooth. So that's what I'm doing here. Then once they're all the same thickness, then I'm going to cut them all to width. Uh, which is what I'm doing here. And, and like I said, it, it, the thickness doesn't really matter. I, I think these were like three and three quarters wide or something like that. Um, 
but that that width I just was as much yield as I could get out of that board. Um, so it, you know, if you were wanting to do a project like this, it, it wouldn't have to be these same dimensions. Um, so now I'm squaring the ends of these, and then um, they're all pretty close to the same length, but they're not exactly close. So what I'm doing is just pairing two up here. So I'll, you'll see me square them off with my crosscut sled here, and then measure out. I think I was measuring these at 48 inches. Um, but then I'm making sure that at least the pairs are, are matched um, for length um, because these are going to end up being in a T-shape. Um, okay, so, so I, I was doing the lay. That's what I was doing there was a layout for these holes. You know, what I like to do when I'm drilling holes with a hole saw is I'll punch like I'm doing, like you see me doing here, um, which gives me an outline, and then I'll get a Forstner bit or a spade bit and cut a relief to give the, the sawdust some place to go, and then I'll come back and finish up the holes. And then I, I just was doing that on my drill press. And then um, I just kind of guessed at an angle here with my, uh, my adjustable bevel gauge there. Um, what looked kind of looked good to me, like it would be easy to get a rod up in the hole and uh, still keep it from just falling out, which is why I went past center there where, where the hole starts to go back up. And uh, so I'm just laying out the, those slots to get the, the rods in a hole. And I, I know a lot of the ones that I've seen, like in the stores or whatever, they just have the slots cut on one side. Um, but I like to be able to run one reel on one side, one reel on the other, and I'll kind of show you that later in, in the video when I'm showing you installed. Anyway, I cut those slots out, and now I'm cutting a groove um, for, for the T, T, and you see all the dust kick, kicking up here. I had forgotten to turn on my uh, dust collector. So I think right about there is, I, I cut it out of the video, but I, I went back and, and turned on my dust collector. So uh, I'm running a, a dado blade set there and that kind of lifts the board, which is why I had that feather board to, to hold it down. Um, and then I just got like a, a, I think it's a 1 8 round over bit in my trim router here. And I'm just gonna ease over all the, the edges and holes and uh, just really cosmetics. I mean, these are going on the ceiling in my garage to hold fishing poles. Um, most people won't even ever see it uh, unless you're watching this video. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, you know, just cleaning up the appearance a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy here. I'm not going to do a bunch of sanding. I had some blow out of the wood um, when I was running. I got these cheap Forstner bits uh, punching holes through there. I had some wood blow on the back of the holes. Anyway. Rounding them over, sanding them down, and then uh, just kind of getting them ready for assembly here. Now doing the layout for uh, for a couple screws. I was going to put a bunch of screws, and then I kind of changed my mind and decided to just go with four screws. When I have something like this where I want to drill um, into a groove and attach two pieces, a lot of times I'll do like what you see me doing here is I started from the inside out. Uh, I drilled those. Now I know that those holes will be centered where I want them to come out. And then I just got the hole sticking through. So now I got a, a, a counter sink bit in my drill. I'll go back through those holes and, and put a pilot there. Um, and I'm just confident now that those those holes are drilled where I want them to be. And then countersinking a few holes there um, for when I mount to the ceiling. And then uh, just going to do glue and uh, some screws and uh, probably overkill. I mean, these are just holding up some, some fishing rods, but uh, that's just how I build things. And then... Uh, Second one, same thing. You can see I, I sped I sped the whole thing up, but I sped this one drastically, sped it up, and uh, there we go. We got a set, and this is where I ended up putting them. 
And you can see when my garage door goes down there that I got those slots cut on both sides and you can see why so I can get a reel on one side, a reel on the other. I can kind of alternate them there. Um, and that's it. Um, thanks for watching. Um, and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you.